Hello everyone, Dr. Mike, TCOM 101. I hope you never, ever, ever forget this Latin phrase, caveat lector, let the reader beware. This is the beginning of all media literacy, skepticism, and that's the mark and even the pose of the educated mind. So let the reader beware, caveat lector. Now in this short video, I want to talk about the concept of freedom and look at freedom, especially media freedom and press freedom around the world today. Of course, there are varying degrees of media freedom around the world today. Not every country is blessed with the liberties and the freedoms that we have here in America. Now, one of the groups that tracks world press freedom every year is a group in Washington, D.C. called Freedom House. It's a nonpartisan group that's dedicated to promoting all forms of freedom. Every year, this group, Freedom House, issues an annual report about media freedom around the world. And they def define media freedom as the ability of journalists to report freely on matters of public interest. They say that's a crucial indicator of democracy, media freedom. Now here's a map created by Freedom House that shows uh, the degrees of press freedom around the world. The countries in green here have the highest degree of press freedom. The countries in the purple or blue are not free. They have severe restrictions on press freedom. Here's another way to look at press freedom. Okay, look at the right side of this graphic. This is uh, the total number of countries represented, about 200. And of those, about 45% of the countries okay, are considered to be free in terms of media and press freedom. If you look at the left side of this chart, it expresses this in terms of the total population of the globe. We can see here that about 40% of the people on the planet live in countries where there's a high degree of media freedom. So not every country in the world enjoys press freedom. In some countries there's a oppressive situation where information is blocked and so this brings us to the political and philosophical foundations of telecommunications. And in this lecture, I want to talk about concepts like liberty and freedom and authority and how they relate to the media. So I want to give you some historical context, some background. I'll be talking about libertarianism, that's the philosophy based on liberty and freedom versus authoritarianism, the philosophy based on authority and how all of this relates to the media and a free media. Let's talk about authoritarianism. That's the oldest political philosophy. It goes back through time immemorial. And it still exists today. Authoritarianism is a form of government characterized by a very strong central power and limited political freedoms, including freedom of expression, freedom of the press. In an authoritarian society, individual freedoms are subordinate to the state, and there's no real constitutional accountability. Now, there are modern authoritarian regimes. Authoritarianism is still alive and well in Russia, in China, Syria, North Korea, and a number of other countries today throughout the world. Now, what are the characteristics of an authoritarian society? 
In an authoritarian country, the state, the collective, the government, it's above everything else. And any means to uphold the state is considered allowable. And the individual is considered to be insignificant, easily replaced, interchangeable. Now you think about our country based on libertarianism, a different philosophy, it's almost the opposite. In our country, we believe in rugged individualism. The individual is very important, but not so in an authoritarian society. Now what about the truth in an authoritarian society? Well, the truth flows in an authoritarian society from the top down. It's whatever the rulers, the leaders say it is, and it's subject to change. And everybody in society is supposed to accept the same truth. The authoritarian truth should be the standard for all members of society. Now, in our country, um, we operate differently in terms of finding the truth. And here's a, one of the authoritarian leaders today, Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Another authoritarian leader is Xi Jinping, the head of uh, China. Maybe we have one here in our country that uh, uh, leans towards authoritarianism. Our President Donald J. Trump. You'll have to decide okay, if you think America has moved towards uh, some authoritarianism. Many of us believe that it has. Okay, what about uh, authoritarianism and the media? Well, the authoritarian theory of the media evolved in 16th, 17th century Europe, and it came about as a result of the rise of the printing press. Okay. In 1450, Johann Gutenberg pioneered the use of movable metal type and the printing press and allowed the mass production of books for the first time. Books are the oldest form of mass communication. And the first book published by Gutenberg or printed by Gutenberg was the Bible. And that wasn't very controversial because the church controlled much of the culture and society in Europe at the time. But when the press, printing press was used to start printing other materials and ideas that challenged authority, then it became a problem for the authoritarian leaders. So the authoritarians very quickly developed ways to control the media. And many of these methods are still used today. Okay, consider these methods of control, state licensing. Here, I'm talking about licensing journalists and people that work in the media. If you license the journalist, you can take away the license if you don't like their work. Prior restraint. That's something called pure censorship. This is checking the content prior to its distribution and then blocking some of that content. Having a government official sitting there at the media organization making judgments about what content will be shared. Post-publication punishment, that's a way to control the media. To punish people if you don't like um, the messages, so this could include everything from jail to torture to even murder. Government ownership. If the government owns the media, it makes it very easy for the government to control the content. And subsidization. And this is another form of control by giving a subsidy. He who pays the piper calls the tune. All right, let's focus in a little bit about uh, China, an authoritarian country that has limited freedoms. Okay, in, a, in China, you're not allowed to question authority. One time I asked a Chinese student what it's like to live in China. He said, I can't complain. I said, I understand. Okay, according to Freedom House, China is home to one of the world's most 
restrictive and oppressive media environments and has a very sophisticated system of censorship. It's the Communist Party in China that controls the news media coverage through its central propaganda department. This is the building that houses the CCTV operation, the Communist China Television Network. This is the building that contains the People's Daily, the major newspaper and news organization in China. Both of these institutions are controlled strongly by the Chinese government. Now, the ruling Communist Party maintains control over news reporting through the following methods. Direct ownership, accreditation or licensing of journalists, harsh penalties for people who criticize the government, and daily directives that are sent to media outlets and websites that guide the coverage of the breaking news stories. If that's not as scary enough, China recently revealed the world's first AI news anchor who was definitely willing to give us the party line and the government spin on all of the news in China. Okay, what about the online world? That, of course, that's harder for the government, the authoritarian governments to control but they still manage to exert influence by blocking websites, by taking phone apps off the domestic marketplace, by ordering the mass deletion of posts, of messages, of accounts, okay, which the government doesn't like because they touch upon banned political, social, economic, and religious topics. There's a whole bunch of um, topics that uh, the Chinese authorities don't allow the people and the media to discuss. Now, if we move over to North Korea, it's even more restrictive. And North Korea has one of the most repressive media environments in the entire world. All domestic media outlets are state-controlled and closely monitored, and they all produce propaganda. And the whole aim is to ensure absolute loyalty to the leader, Kim Jong-un. Access to any foreign or independent media is tightly restricted. And if you're found consuming unauthorized news, you could face severe punishment. Now, my idea is that the free spirit of humankind has opposed authoritarianism, has led people to chip away at the doctrines of authoritarianism. We've seen this here in our country. Our the United States of America is based on a rejection of authoritarian control. And so there have been revolutions in the United States and many other countries in which an attempt has been made to push back on authority and authoritarianism. And so we'll be talking about um, those great revolutions and the rise of a political philosophy called libertarianism, which is based on liberty and freedom as opposed to strong authority. Anyway, that's all I've got for this little video on authoritarianism. Please uh, continue to take care of yourselves and each other during the great pandemic and I hope to see you soon. So long, everybody.